Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arundhati Ramnan and here are the top headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. The bulls are back after an eight-day break. Sensex and Nifty gain nearly 1% each despite a slightly lower than expected GDP growth number and lingering concerns over further rate hikes. Mid-cap index jumps over 1.5%. The overall market cap on the BSC rises by over 3 lakh crore rupees. For the first time since the 13th of January, all listed entities of the Adani Group have ended a trading day in the green. The firms have added 75,000 crore rupees in market cap over the last two sessions. Domestic and commercial cooking gas gets costlier. Household will have to pay 50 rupees more per cylinder, while cylinders to commercial establishments will cost 350 rupees more. This is the second biggest one-time hike since 2014. Axis Bank completes the acquisition of Cities India Consumer Business for 11,600 crore rupees. The move will bring 3 million city customers into the Axis fold. The deal will grow Axis Bank's card balance sheet by 57%. Dish TV's minority shareholders allege breach of corporate governance practices by the satellite television provider. A letter to stock exchanges SEBI and the company's creditors alleges that the board delayed the appointment of directors approved by the ministry. GSC collections come in just shy of 1.5 lakh crore rupees in February. That's 12% higher than a year ago, but a tad lower than the January number. This puts monthly collections above 1.4 lakh crore rupees for the 12th month in a row. The auto sector's February sales numbers are a mixed bag. Passenger vehicle sales remain on a strong footing, but exports struggle for traction. Tractor sales hit high gear. Foreign ministers of G20 nations and heads of delegations arrive in India for pre-summit discussions. Russia-Ukraine war to be on the agenda along with multilateralism, food and energy security and counter-terrorism. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar holds bilateral meetings with delegates including UK, Russia and Turkish counterparts. Cabinet reshuffle in Delhi after Manish Sisodia and Satyendra Jain resigned from their post. Senior party leaders Saurabh Bharadwaj and Atishi to be inducted as ministers. Some of Sisodia and Jain's portfolios could be handed over to Kailash Gelot and Rajkumar Anand. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to hold a meeting with AAP MLAs and councillors this evening. Five people dead in latest Russian bombing on Ukraine's Kherson region. Three people killed in Donetsk shelling. Russia claims a military drone targeted its gas facility in Moscow. Russian Defense Ministry says it thwarted two drone attacks. United States says it does not expect significant Russian territorial gains in 2023. All that and more coming up on this edition of Business 360. But we'll start with the day's market action. After eight days of losing ground, it was time for a reversal and a fairly strong one at that. Despite a weaker than expected quarterly GDP reading on Monday and sustained concerns over more rate hikes, indices rose. Sensex and Nifty both ended nearly 1% higher, while the mid-cap index gained over 1.5%. The Bank Nifty was up over 1% as well. Today's gains have added over 3 lakh crore rupees to investor wealth on the BSC. Uh, CNBC TV 18's Prashant Nair has a breakdown of the day's trading action. Prashant, this rally comes after quite a long losing streak, doesn't it? Eight days the market's been selling off. It lost 900 points nearly. And finally, we get a solid positive daily close. And I think uh, many who've been anticipating and calling for a bit of a pullback, saying this is excessive, this is too one-way, non-stop, will appreciate what we saw today. Across the board, there was green. Banks have been outperforming the Nifty over the last couple of days, and that continued uh, today as well. Actually, on the Nifty, uh, before I come to the Nifty, the mid and small cap indices are also uh, coming, coming up on your screen. Uh, they did very well. Market breadth was extremely positive in favor of advances. Uh, now, on the Nifty, there were three distinct buckets which did well. So you had uh, the banks, so names like SBI, Axis, Indocent, which uh, went up. Uh, the tech names, TCS, HCL Tech, Tech Mahindra, uh, did very well. And then a combination of resources, so Tata Steel, ONGC, Coal India, uh, the China PMI numbers which we got earlier were super strong, and that kind of uh, kept the place, uh, kept that uh, particular space uh, in an excited uh, way. In the broader space, again, lots of gainers and some of the big beaten down names. I mean, the Inouye companies, Rupa, Dollar Industries, uh, you know, Donier, uh, another uh, sort of uh, uh, clothes maker. The Adani pack did very well. Once again, Adani Enterprises, Adani Power, Adani Green were some of the top gainers in that particular uh, sort of pack. 
Uh, names like Uflex, Triveni Turbine. Triveni Turbine is continuing to make newer highs. Uflex has done 20% in the last two days. Uh, look at APL Apollo, Nalco, uh, Sonata Software, Hindusan Copper, Minda Corp, Garden Reach. It was a long list of very strong volume-led gains that we saw today. But as I say, it's just one day. You need more evidence that the market is basing out. And I think that will only come with time. Uh, what one can hope for now is that the U.S. market behaves itself. The dollar does not rise. It cools off a little bit like it did during the Asian session. Yields are well behaved and uh, equity indices uh, stabilize or go up. That's the handoff we want for this market to build on the gains we've seen today. Back to you. Absolutely. A good day there for the bulls. Thank you so much for all those details, Prashant. And as he was mentioning, it's another day of some respite for the Adani group. All of the 10 group stocks ended the session in the green. And as you can see, Adani Enterprises gained the most, rallying about 15%. The group stocks added a little over 44,000 crore rupees of market capitalization today. The combined market capitalization is increased by 11% in two sessions and is now at 7.56 lakh crore rupees. Global crude oil prices began the month on a firm footing, helped by surprisingly strong economic data from China. Brent climbed above $84 a barrel and NYMEX crossed $77 before giving in to profit booking. But some traders see this as the start of a longer up move since China has registered a rise in manufacturing activity and it's the fastest in over 10 years. PMI for February came in at a much higher than expected 52.6 against 50.1 in January. This is being seen as a sign that oil demand from the world's largest importer may be set to rise in the coming months as the economy recovers from over two years of lockdowns. The price of domestic and commercial LPG cylinders have been increased by oil marketing companies with effect from today. This is the second biggest one-time hike in LPG prices. Sonal Butra is here with more details. Sonal, uh, what's leading to these price hikes? Uh, well, yes, it's a big price hike that has come through as far as the LPG prices are concerned. On the commercial side, even bigger. 350 rupees per cylinder and it is above the 2100 rupees mark in a long time. Uh, it is a 20% increase that we have seen from the previous levels. As far as the retail or the 14.2 kg cylinder price is concerned, something that we use in our own homes, there the price hike has been to the tune of 4.7% and this has been increased to 1103 rupees per cylinder as well. Now, this is the second biggest hike in the commercial space that we have seen in the LPG price as well. The last one was seen in 2014. Uh, generally, how are the LPG prices calculated domestically, it is a function of import parity price, which is determined on the basis of LPG pricing abroad or in the international markets. Uh, international LPG prices, they are dependent on how crude prices, prices move internationally. It is a function of that. So the way crude prices will be, we'll see that impact on international LPG prices and that is how we will determine our own prices, assuming that this fuel is largely imported in the country as well. Uh, the major factors that impact uh, LPG prices include, of course, international crude prices. The second is how rupee has been uh, versus the dollar. If it has depreciated a lot more, then we'll see higher prices as well. Port charges, dealer commissions, insurance, etc. are some of the other, car, uh, other costs as well. But the fact is, we've not seen a major rupee depreciation. We've not seen higher crude oil prices as well. Globally, gas prices all also have been falling. In European markets, they are at a multi-month low. US gas prices have almost become one-third from the uh, peak levels. So there are no major reasons as to why this would have happened. Uh, but yes, it's a sharp, sharp increase that we've seen and definitely something which will impact customers all around. All right, Sonal, thank you so much for those details. Now, meanwhile, the price of aviation turbine fuel has been revised lower in line with softening international oil prices. Jet fuel prices were cut by 4% to 1.07 lakh per kiloliter in Delhi. The prices have been slashed by a little over 4,606 rupees per kiloliter. Axis Bank has completed its acquisition of Citigroup's India consumer business. The transaction has been valued at a little over 11,600 crore rupees. The deal was announced in March last year and received the green signal from the competition regulator in July. Abhishek Kotari joins us now with the details. Abhishek, how will this deal benefit Axis Bank and what does this mean for Citi's existing customers? Well, it's a good one and finally it gets completed. Uh, it was announced earlier and now is the completion that we are seeing. So they have completed the acquisition of Citibank's uh, India consumer business. The transaction cost is a little over 11,600 crore. The earlier estimation was about 12,325 crore. So around 600-700 crore a bit of saving over there. The CCI or the Competition Commissioner of India had approved this transaction in July of 2022. So what is in store for Access Bank? 
bank. Around 30 lakh customers uh, do get added to the bank. Uh, the card balance sheet uh, can grow by an additional 25 lakh customers. This, this is the credit card portfolio, uh, which is one of the best for Citibank. So branch expansion will aid in loan growth going ahead. Uh, City Wealth and Private Banking has an AM of more than 1 lakh 10,000 crore, which gets added over here. And deposit accretion is pretty strong of more than 50,000 crores that we can see getting added to Axis Bank. Salary business of Axis Bank will strengthen uh, post the deal. And in terms of numbers, uh, you know, the proposed transaction or post this transaction, uh, they'll have an additional 6.6% .6 uh, to the deposit base and about 11.2% addition to the CASA or the low cost deposits uh, that will get added. And about 3.7% is the loan accretion that they will have post this deal. Back to you. All right, Kotari, many thanks for those details. Now, shifting gears to the auto sector, sales for the month of February have been a mixed bag so far. Sonia Shinoy is here with a roundup of all of those numbers. Sonia? It was a mixed bag for the auto sector this time around. Let's start with the positives. On the stronger side, you had the tractor makers that delivered very good numbers. Both Escorts and M&M reported a growth of more than 25% in their numbers. Escorts up 27.8% and M&M tractor sales up by 26% year on year. Even M&M auto sales were not too bad. Sales growth came in at 8% year on year at 58,800 units. Ashok Leland's numbers were also quite good despite being slightly lower than what the street was estimating. Ashok Leland total sales went up 27 percent on the weaker side though you had the export companies that suffered quite a bit both maruti and bajaj auto saw a big fall in exports this time maruti total sales growth of just under five percent dragged down by a fall in exports exports down 28 percent bajaj auto's total sales were down 11 percent led by almost a 40 percent fall in the export piece for bajaj auto tata motors as well saw a bit of a slowdown in fact the commercial vehicle sales for tata motors was down three percent coming in at 36,565 units. So all in all, you'd have to say it was a mixed bag for the auto sector. So a mixed bag for the auto sector. Sector. Thank you so much for those details, Sonia. On to the latest in the Dish TV Yes Bank tussle. CNBC TV 18 has accessed Dish TV's Minority Investors Association letter sent to the exchanges and SEBI. In the letter, the Investors Association has alleged a breach in corporate governance. The letter states that Dish TV delayed the appointment of the directors approved by the INB ministry and has only proposed two of the six independent directors approved. Ritu Singh is here with all of those details. Ritu, what are you picking up? That's right, we understand that DISH TV's Minority Investors Association has alleged a breach in corporate governance by DISH TV for failing to disclose the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting letter which approved director nominations on its board to the exchanges. Now, we did access a letter which was written by these minority investors which has been addressed to the board of DISH TV and also copied to SEBI and stock exchanges as well as various creditors and stakeholders. And in this letter, the shareholders have stated that they obtained this information through an RT where they found out that the ministry had approved the names of six independent directors for appointment to the board of the company on the 26th of December last year. And since then, Dish TV has failed to disclose the ministry's permission or letter to the stock exchanges and also delayed the appointment of these directors which have been approved by the ministry thereby committing a breach in corporate governance. Now this is also significant because it's coming just days ahead of Dish TV's proposed EJM which is scheduled on the 3rd of March where it is going to seek shareholders approval to nominate four independent directors to its board and herein lies another issue because remember the tussle between Dish TV and Yes Bank which holds 24% stake in the company and of course now it has sold it to JC Flowers has been ongoing with Yes Bank proposing to overhaul the board. Now as per our sources in Yes Bank, the names which has been proposed by Dish TV do not include any of the independent directors' names which were proposed by Yes Bank and are thereafter approved by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. And further, of the four names which have been proposed, two have not even been approved by the Ministry. So the minority shareholders in their letter to the board have demanded that the company convene a board meeting and appoint the Ministry-approved directors immediately and hold the management accountable for not reporting official communication to the board to protect the rights of all stakeholders. Right, Ritu. Many thanks for those details. Now, on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Akasa CEO Vinay Dubey has hinted at a three-digit aircraft order by the end of 2023. Speaking exclusively to Ritu Singh, Dubey said that he expects the airline to commence its international operations by the end of the year. He adds that the company is looking to hire 300 pilots in the next 12 months. Take a look. We expect to fly uh, internationally by the end of this calendar year, by December of 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
two aircraft a month or the aircraft every 15 days is going to end by the 20th aircraft. After that, we're going to move to a cadence where we deliver between 12 and 15 aircraft uh, okay. every year. So the cadence is going to to, to slow down just a bit. Uh, you know, however, um, you know, going from zero to 72 aircraft um, in in five years is is no sort of you know slouch or or, or slow growth. Pilot requirement in the next uh, 12 months alone is 300. So we'll be looking to hire 300, you know, additional pilots. And the exciting part, you know, in terms of whether it's hiring pilots or mechanics or flight attendants, is that we're hiring them for the 737 Max, which is the latest and greatest technology. Mm -hmm. So the people that we're hiring, we think are, you know, going to have a, a skill that is going to be, you know, a skill for the future. NASCOM's annual flagship tech and leadership forum kicked off today. CNBC TV 18's Reema Tendulkar caught up with Krishnan Ramanujam, the chairperson of NASCOM. He said that there was a cautious outlook among clients amidst geopolitical concerns. However, many tech company CEOs said that they will largely focus on hiring for the year going ahead. While I'm not able to share any numbers uh, for the year ahead, the survey broadly points uh, to caution in the wind. Right? And that's understandable. I think we've all known it for a while that the uh, war in Ukraine, uh, the recessionary uh, headwinds that are caused by the combination of the war and other geopolitical uh, considerations that are going on, as well as the effect of inflation, the rate, uh, US dollar strengthening, and so on and so forth. Most organizations globally are uh, having a very hard time in terms of planning and the horizon uh, at which they have to plan. In next two, three years, we will have a robust growth, that I have said. Uh, of course, 30% plus is uh, a part of organic and inorganic. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but I think uh, uh, our um, organic growth has been strong even in this year, 24-25%. Uh, focus for us is improving the quality of fire. That's what we have to continue to do it. We believe that uh, we are getting into more complex projects. We, are, uh, we require, apart from software skills, also very d good domain knowledge. So we are looking at really increasing our quality of hires, both from the colleges, but laterally more. Latest on the heat wave concerns, Indian Meteorological Department says it recorded deficient rainfall in February across India. The weather department says La Nina conditions are still prevailing in parts of India and will likely weaken in March. The Met Department also predicts that maximum temperatures in northwest and central India will remain above normal from March to May. Cabinet reshuffle in Delhi after Manish Sisodia and Satyendra Jain resigned from their posts. Uh, senior party leaders Saurabh Bhardwaj and Atishi to be inducted as ministers. Some of Sisodia and Jain's portfolios have been handed over to Kailash Gehlot and Rajkumar Anand, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, to hold a meeting with AAP MLAs and councillors this evening. Madhya Pradesh government tabled a 3.14 lakh crore budget for the coming fiscal year. The government also allocated 8,000 crore rupees for a scheme under which 1,000 rupees will be deposited in the bank account of non-income tax pay women. However, no new tax proposals have been announced. On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break. But coming up next, foreign ministers of G20 nations and heads of delegations arrive in India for pre-summit discussions. Russia-Ukraine war to be on the agenda along with multilateralism, food and energy security. Details when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still with us on Business 360. Days after hosting G20 finance ministers and central bank governors in Bengaluru, New Delhi is all set to roll out the red carpet for foreign ministers, external affairs, and Jay Shankar, uh, S. Jay Shankar will be hosting Chinese foreign minister, Russian minister Lavrov, and U.S. Secretary of State Blinken. A formal inaugural dinner is scheduled later tonight. It would be a tightrope walk for India diplomatically with ties between the West and Russia at an all-time low. The West has also been wary of China's recent engagements with the Kremlin. Parikshit Lutra joins us now with more. Parikshit, a big diplomatic meeting tomorrow. What's on the agenda? Uh, well, of course, Russia, Ukraine. Uh, the war will figure prominently on the agenda. It will be weighing on everyone's mind. And you can expect sharp discussions, uh, sharp remarks to be exchanged between Russia, China and the G7. The G7 has already made it clear they will not accept any kind of communique or statement which does not have a reference to the Ukraine war or at least the Bali declaration to the very least. So it's quite likely that even this meeting 
in New Delhi will end without a communique uh, and will possibly end with a summary from the chair. So what uh, the two sides will be discussing, apart from the war, would be the energy transition. They will be talking about climate finance, uh, terror funding, counter-terrorism. This will focus. Uh, this will be a big focus of the talks tomorrow. There are, there's a separate session on that. Food and energy security and uh, our development goals. This will figure in uh, different uh, discussions through the day. There will also be press conferences by different leaders. For example, Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, he's hosting a press conference for the media later in the day. There will be a G7, pre uh, there will be a G20 presidency press conference that will be chaired by uh, Foreign Minister Jay Shankar as well. All the G20 leaders will call on the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister is also likely to address one of the sessions in the morning tomorrow. All right, Parikshit, many thanks for all those details. Now, during his bilateral meeting with External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, UK Foreign Secretary James Cleverly brought up the issue of BBC's controversial documentary. Government sources tell CNBC TV18 the UK Foreign Secretary was firmly told all entities operating in India must comply fully with relevant laws and regulations. Five people dead in latest Russian bombing on Ukraine's Kursar region. Three people have been killed in Donetsk. Russia has claimed a military drone targeted its gas facility in Mo Moscow. Sanjay Suri gets us the latest from Kursar. Sanjay? It's the silence of death here in Kherson. At least four killed in artillery shelling of the city on Tuesday. Six killed just days earlier, standing at a bus stop here. Another rocket attack hit this area shortly before we arrive. A few hours ago, uh, this place was bombed with Russian rocket. Actually, there is dump with the rocket. A Russian attack uh, actually a civilian's object uh, in Kherson city, uh, 10, 12 uh, per day. If we uh, speak about uh, Kherson region, it's about uh, 70, 19, uh, hundreds, uh, 70, 90 rise times uh, per day. And this is where the rocket landed and we are told by the military here, this is just a few hours before we have come to this place. And this is for us something quite extraordinary and shocking to witness, but people are living here. There are still some people living here and they're living with this day after day. And that's the latest in Ukraine. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Business 360. Many thanks for watching, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news continues on the other side.